I don't mind you being the Toastmasters one. Oh, okay. Oh. We he lost hitting, Norm. He was hitting too many emojis. <laughs> yeah, the wrong button. That's a good, you just, you just did Norm's analogy on him, Claudio. <laughs> I am ready to be the timer. Uh, maybe um, I can prepare some questions. The tabletops, okay. Yep. Uh, Megan, would you like to try to be the grammarian? Yes, I can do that. The grammarian will announce to us the word of the day and you'll be counting the filler words, the us, us, and also any excellent word that you think. I'm sorry, who's doing what? I pushed the wrong you, you are the Toastmasters, Megan is grammarian, Mary is the tabletop to masters, and I will be the timer. Okay, Megan. Oh, well. We'll work this out as we go through. Hi. Welcome to the Potential Napanee Club, particularly to Tracy. And we have one speaker today, that's me. And do we have, oh, well, does anybody have the club mission handy to read? I can find it. Okay. We'll start there. I think I remember it. I can say it ahead. Go ahead. We provide a positive and learn and supportive learning experience where members are empowered to become better leaders and get self confidence. I butchered it a little bit. <laughs> That's okay. You can, yeah. There's there's one more phrase there. Oh. There we go. We provide a supportive and positive learning experience in which members are empowered to develop communication and leadership skills, resulting in greater self-confidence and personal growth. Thank you, Claudia. You're welcome. All right. Claudio. Yeah, uh, I'm doing this without my, my cheat notes here. So we have a couple club officers, Claudio and Mary, you can correct me what I'm, tell me what I'm leaving out. So Megan, are you the grammarian? That is correct. Okay. What does the grammarian do, Megan? I am responsible for introducing uh, the word of the day and to make sure that I am reviewing any sort of unnecessary words and sounds used by members, sounds or words such as ah, uh, um, er. That is my job. And you will tell us about this at some time, I hope, at the end of the meeting? That is correct, yes. Oh. Now you understand you have to look like a, a a, lib a spinster librarian next time if you're doing the grammarian role. Got it. Okay. And who is our timer? I am Mr. Toastmasters. As the timer, I will be keeping track on time of all prepared and impromptu speaking, speakers, speak, speech, sorry. When the person reaches the minimum time, I will show my green background at the medium time yellow and the maximum time red. And that means that the speaker needs to conclude the speech. Just as an example, table talks is one to two minutes. I will show the green at one, the yellow at 1.30 and the red at two minutes. And I will be providing a report at the end of the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And while I was pushing the wrong buttons, uh, Tracy, what are you helping us with for the meeting? I haven't been assigned to anything. Oh, what do we have left? GE. Pardon? The general evaluator. 
oh, I need someone to evaluate what I'm doing. Tracy. The, the speech evaluator? Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you. She's, a, she's get... a master. She did this last time. So this is good. Oh, a pro. A good pro. practice. And just oh. as a note, Trace, you, you have two to three minutes to deliver your evaluation. If it's shorter, that's fine. But okay. try not, not more than three minutes. OK. Uh, Mary, what is your role? Table topic master. Okay. Shall we go? Are you ready if we went there right now? Can I? Yep. Oh, may I hey. say that? May I say the word of the day? Oh, yes. Thank you. Claudio, you've already received three points because the word of the day is time. We dealt with daylight savings time last week. So the word of the day will be time. I know I'm supposed to give a definition, but. I don't have one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Are you sure we get to count, count Claudio's three already? Of course. Oh, damn. Okay. Table tops. <clears throat> Mary, would you please explain the benefit, what it is and what are the benefits of it? Right. So table topics are questions that will be asked at random. And then you will get two to three minutes to deliver your response and ideally to deliver it in a way that is effective to communicate the message that you want to put across. The reason that we do table topics is just so we can prepare ourselves to talk on the spot when we are required or when we're needed. Example is maybe when you are talking to your boss and they just ask a question that needs to be answered and table topics will be helpful for that. So I have prepared, well, I just found 10 questions that are fun to get to know each other. And I will start by asking Claudio if he would like to take the first question. Thank you, Madam Tabletop Master. Just a, a question. It will be one to two minutes or two to three minutes? One to two minutes. Okay, thank yeah. you. Okay. All right. So, Claudio, would you like to be famous? And in what way? Thank you, Madame Toastmasters. I would just get my clock ready here because time is very important in this meeting today. And I'm the time. <laughs> and the question is if I want to be successful? Famous. Famous, yes. Honestly, I don't think that I would like to be famous more than I am. As you know, if you you can ask anybody here in Kings, oh, you know Rigero? They will say, oh, that that's the guy. Oh, what what he does? Oh, he go to Norm's house and he split wood. <laughs> And maybe they will say, oh, but he's lazy. Now he's sending his sons that he's not going anymore. That is one of the, my nicknames here that I'm famous is the lumberjack. It's Sidian lumberjack. But going back to the topic, I think famous brings a lot of trouble being famous. You have a lot of paparazzis following you. Sometimes being famous means that you make more money and then you have a lot of your family members asking you for money. They want to oh, borrow money from you. I don't know. And you, you will lose a lot of your privacy. P politicians, they, they are public fig figures. They tend to be naturally famous and they don't have a lot of freedom that a normal person can do. If you go to a pub, if you're famous, somebody will, oh, could you please sign this for me? And that's interesting because back in Brazil, one, one of my friends, he, he was a soccer player and he played in the national team. And it was crazy every time that okay we are traveling together and 
someone someone comes hey junio could you please sign this or could you take a picture with me all of these that i'm coming to would drive me okay i prefer to be anonymous than to be famous thank you very much all right thank you so much claudio and you're thank right you. fame can be very scary. It's a huge responsibility to carry around. The next question I would like to ask Megan. Megan, are you ready for a question? Please. All right. What would be a perfect day for you? I'm sorry, can you clarify? Is it day, D-A-Y, or date, D-A-T-E? Well, you can tell us both, but the question was day, D-A-Y. <laughs> perfect. I'm, I'm married, so I don't have perfect dates anymore. <laughs> oh, how sad. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you, Madame Toastmaster uh, Table Topics for the question. The question being, what is my perfect day? Is that correct? Yes. So, my perfect day, I think about quite often. I think about that movie called Benjamin Button, and I think to myself, why am I working every day for somebody else when I should be enjoying my life, spending it the way I want because I am healthy and mobile and have the ability to? And then as we get older, that is when I should be sitting in a chair on a computer working for somebody else. So I do think of this question quite often. The perfect day for me would definitely include food, which I absolutely love. A, a perfect day for me would include some sort of physical activity as well as something in nature so I could combine the two. I could go for maybe a hike to get my physical activity, but then be out in nature. And definitely spending time with friends and family, I think would be the perfect day for me. Mm. Thank you so much. Thank you for that answer, Megan. And I agree. I think perfect days are those that we spend nourishing our souls with the things that we really love. I love that answer. All right, Norm, would you like to take the next question? I don't have any choice, do I? But yes. I... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was just a tricky question. <laughs> For what in life do you feel most grateful? For what in life do you feel most grateful? Thank you, Madam Table Topics person. What in life do I feel most grateful for? Well, that's, we're doing existential stuff here. I was just prepared to talk about my dog. Um, I think while I'm alive, that's one thing. Uh, as one of my friends said, as someone was alluding to as you get older, um, well, I sit up in the morning, I can take ref uh, refreshments. But I think, what am I, well, two things that I can think of right away. One is um, my life has been much enhanced over the past 50 years because Nancy and I have been married that long, though we've known each other longer than that. But without her, I wouldn't be this healthy. She cooks great food, it's really tasty. I'd still be eating junk food. Um, and not being as healthy. So I'm grateful for uh, my, my life with Nancy. I don't think it's gonna go on for another 50 years, but who knows? And I think the other thing that I'm grateful for is as Megan alluded to, uh, nature. And I now have the advantage of, I don't have to sit in front of a computer all day long, I can, turn the thing off or I can push the wrong button and that does the same thing. Um, so I'm grateful for being out where we live. I did live in Toronto for two and a half years. That was long enough. Thank you. And we moved to Kingston and now we're up on Sydenham Lake. So I'm grateful for the nature and the environment around me. Those, those are the two things that I'm grateful for, Mary. Mm. Thank you very much. 
Thank you so much, Norm. That was such a beautiful answer. I love that you have been with Nancy for 50 years and that is part of your beautiful memories or things that you're really grateful for. That's beautiful. Thank you for that. Chrissy, would you like to take the next question? Sure. All right. What do you value most in friendship? What do you value most in friendship? Thank you, table topics. Madam Table Topics person, I guess. Can't say master at the end of that. Um, thank you for the question. And it is, what do I value most in friendship? I, I don't have a lot of friends. Uh, I have a lot of acquaintances. Um, they are people that I know, uh, can hang out with, can do uh, lots of activities with, but my real friends are my family. I, I would have to say the, we spend the most time together. We spend, um, quality time together and it's, it's always a lot of fun. My sister-in-law and I went for a hike last week uh, north of Kingston at Rock Dunder. I had never been there before and it was absolutely incredible. And I value her friendship ex so much for making me do these things and inviting me to, to be out in nature and to get away from the computer, like Norm just said. And um, so I, I value and treasure her um, in my life. The other thing that I, I really treasure about friendship is some, um, or value about my friends is that I can count on them to, to help me through things, to talk through things, to, um, you know, boost me up when I'm feeling down or to um, just make me feel like I am a nice person. <laughs> I believe I'm a nice person, but sometimes we need that reassurance. So that's what I'm uh, thankful and uh, what I value in my friendships. All right. Thank you so much, Tracy. I love that answer. It's truly beautiful when you can find people or even just a person to actually do life with. That is really beautiful. Thank you for that answer. Thank you. Noam, do we, can we do another round? I still have questions. Oh, yes, we have enough. Well, I, just before we do that, I think we should have a vote. Uh, hands up, all the people, and Tracy, you're allowed to vote on this too. It's like Nova Scotia, you know, vote early, vote often, or in the United States. Uh, you're allowed to vote on this question. All hands up who think, tra who think Tracy is a worthwhile, useful, delightful person. <laughs> Good thinking. Tracy voted for that too. All right. <laughs> yes, Mary, do you have more yes. questions? <laughs> Can't yeah. you ask about dogs or something? Go ahead. All right, so Megan, do you want to take the next one? I will. All right, I'm just going to ask you the same question I asked Claudia because I would love to know your answer. Would you like to be famous and in what way? Thank you for that question, Madame Toastmaster person or table topics person. When you had asked that question to Claudio, I myself was trying to think if I would want to be famous or not. If this was pre-COVID, I think I would have said yes. However, I find with COVID, <clears throat> I found a lot of peace through COVID that allowed me to slow down and appreciate the small things and really concentrate more on my relationships, very similar to Tracy with my friends and, and my close, my family. Therefore, I think my answer now during COVID and beyond would be no, I don't think that I would be famous, similar to some of Claudio's answers. I do like my downtime, although I am an extroverted person, I do appreciate my downtime and it would be difficult to go out and do the things like a hike at Rock Dunder, as Tracy mentioned, or visiting Nova Scotia, as Norm has mentioned. 
that you wouldn't be able to sort of get away because there would always be somebody that might know you or want something from you. So my answer would be no to being famous. All right. Thank you. Thank you for that answer. Um, next question is going to go to Claudio. Claudio, are you ready? Thank you, Madame Tabletop Master. All right. What is your most treasured memory? What is your most treasured memory? Thank you for the question. Uh, memories are hard to choose one. I have a lot of good memories with my family since I was a child and even as an adult. And I have a lot of good memories with friends and my new family, that is my wife and my kids. They are all really good, good memories. And when we are in all these post COVID or COVID, stuff people started creating whatsapp groups and i i have one that is for from a lot of people from my engineering university and that is very very nice to have that because there is a lot of memories that people will start talking to and chatting and it, usually they are funny because like, oh, you are young, your universe, you are messing up some things. You don't have a lot of responsibility. And that, that is amazing how this, all this problem that we are still facing with COVID can bring in some tools that will help us to, to re, revise some good memories that we have. Thank you very much. Thank you, Claudio. I love that answer so much because it's just the joys of, of reminiscing on those good old times. They just dissolve all the worries. Thank you for that beautiful answer, Claudio. All right, Noam, I'm gonna ask you a question and I'm very interested to hear your answer. <laughs> when did you last cry in front of another person? When did you last cry in front of another person? Oh boy. Um, I think of one, how many people here watch uh, Call the Midwife on WPBS TV? Nobody. Oh, I've got I, to work on- My I parents mean, oh, do. Oh, good for them. <laughs> that was Sunday night. That was, and, I don't know how they manage to do it every week, but they do. It's an amazing program on WPBS TV about midwives. Now they're into the 1960s and there's always a problem that they sell, solve. It's sort of drama, sort of comedy, uh, my, light years ahead of any soap opera. And that was the last time Nancy and I cried watching that program. Um, but you're probably thinking of something else, Megan, and I'm trying to think when that would have been, um, excluding funerals, um, although at my father's funeral, I remember that, that's many years ago, he was a veteran of the Second World War, but, and um, there was a pretty normal funeral and everything was fine, and because he was a veteran, Unbeknownst to us, the um, Department of Defense, in conjunction with the Legion, somehow they knew about this. I don't know how they knew about it. We had nothing to do with it. And a piper turned up. And that was okay. And everything went fine until the piper played Amazing Grace. And boy, was that a tearjerker. Uh, so that that's the last time that I can remember, other than you know, hitting my, my thumb with a hammer or something stupid like that. I've done that lots of times. So that's the, that's the last time I cried in public, Mary. Probably not, mm -hmm. but we'll go with that one. Mm. Well, thank you. Thank you for that answer. That is still so beautiful. I mean, 
even just crying with your wife because you're watching a movie, I think that's really cute. <laughs> Thank you for that answer, Norm. All right, Tracy, I have a question for you. Are you willing to take it? Uh, yes. All right. What, if anything, is too serious to be joked about? What is too serious to be, jo <laughs> to be joked about, if anything? Thank you, Table Topics Master, for the question. And it is, what is too serious uh, to be joked about? Yes. If there's anything at all. Uh, it's a very challenging question, actually. Um, I have um, grown up in a, a family that is very sarcastic and um, throws one-liners out at sort of anything and everything. Um, and so it's difficult to know, um, to determine when someone is joking and when they're not joking. Um, it, it, we have to be very sensitive to what people are, are thinking and feeling. We don't know what's going on in people's lives and, and how they are reacting to different things. So I, I think that every situation might be a little bit different. There are certainly a lot of things in life that are not a joke, um, that are very dear to people's hearts, um, that hit some chords. I'm going to um, just go a little bit further here and, and finish answer Norm's question too. I'm probably going to cry right now. <laughs> I feel. <laughs> um, That's okay. It's. <clears throat> yeah, I, I, I don't know that there's <clears throat> any right or wrong answer to this. I feel like everybody has their own um, feelings and situations that they deal with differently. So sometimes joking helps people get through and sometimes crying. <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Tracy. Thank you. That's a beautiful answer. And um, I also get lost. I get lost when there's a lot of sarcasm. I'm like, are you serious or are you not serious right now? Am I supposed to be offended or to laugh at that? It's kind of confusing, but thank you so much for that answer. Um, Norm, do you have a question for me? I would love to take that table topic. Oh, um, while I'm thinking, does anyone have a question for Mary? It's got to be deeply existential or philosophical. Oh my gosh, I like I, one. <laughs> I can use one from the 365 here. Okay. I just need to pick one very difficult one. That's it. Mm -hmm. Yep. yep. Uh, how, Mary, how would you describe the past year of your life in one sentence? <laughs> huh. how would i describe the best year of my life in one sentence the best that, can be the best the what it's the best last year or the best if you want okay good in one word i would say it is mindful a year where i have been able to actually be present so early this year, uh, spring of this year, I there was still a lockdown and I had moved from where I lived and I was living by myself. I do have a roommate, but still living by myself. Um, and this early this year, it was I just was really anxious. I could feel anxiety in my body all the time. It was crazy. But at the same time, I was able to go for runs each morning. Sometimes it'd be raining, sometimes it would still be like snow and all wet, but I managed to go for walks. And then I, I, had, I had a real strict healthy diet of vegetables and juices and all that. And then I did a lot of meditations and I journaled a lot. And while that season was really difficult just because of all the anxiety, I also really enjoyed it. I felt like I really grew. I really grew in myself in just being able to listen to my body and listen to all the emotions and actually pay attention to them and, and hold space for them. So, if I had 
to describe the best year of my life, it would be a year where I am able to be fully present in the here and now, to absorb all the, the joys, to absorb all the, the hard emotions, as long as I just don't miss out, as long as I am present all the time. I don't know if that's possible to achieve, but I am working toward that. Back to you, Toastmaster of the day, Norm. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mary. Thank you. And just so our grammarian is aware, I was keeping track, because uh, I used to teach writing, academic writing. Um, that was a long sentence. There were no periods at all in Mary's description there. So they counted as one sentence. Okie dokie. Any questions? Tracy, Megan? On, okay. And um, thank you, Tracy, for your last answer. Congratulations. Good for you. So I get to introduce myself because I didn't send anything to anybody. That's my fault. And what I'm going to do is show you the, it would be the what, second uh, presentation you do in level one. So you've done your icebreaker and you can talk about anything you want in the icebreaker. And then you get some commentary, some evaluations on it. And then you can take that information and deliver. You can take the same information and deliver it again, or you can use a sec another presentation knowing how you could change it just a little bit. So I'm going to, uh, never done this one before. So I think this is how it's going to work. I'll tell you what I was doing at the uh, Seaway Toastmasters Club in Cornwall. And then I'll tell you the um, evaluation commentary that they said, and then I'll show you and tell you how I changed to make it better. And I think that's the way it's going to go, I hope cross your fingers. And I think, uh, Ms. who's the timer? Mad Mr. Timer, we're going to use Eastern Standard Time, unless you want to use Brazilian time. Um, that goes a little, that gives me extra space, I think. So we'll do it in eight to 10 minutes. How does that sound, folks? Thank you. Okay. So this is a, a reprise, a redo of the icebreaker that I did in whatever pathway I'm on. I'm on number six pathways. They all seem kind of run together. So. so I was doing a session on how to wave because I watched a little video clip of, you can start the timing now, sir, of uh, Princess Diana. She's in a car. So I thought, yeah, I, I could do a whole bunch of things about waves. So the first one I did was the regal, you know, that wave that they do and then then they just you know do it from their elbow one of the comments i got was to make that more specific was let's call it the metronome wave uh, great and then the, uh, the the second part of that was while you're doing the metronome you would have to whoops you got to move this way <laughs> this is like teaching everything is backwards to the class you have to go tick, tock, tick, tock, tick, tock. So now you've got a gesture and you've got a sound with it. And that makes, makes it easier for the people to understand. And that's the metronome wave. Uh, just while you're, you're there, for the folks that haven't done Toastmasters before, those are my speaking notes. But that's all you need, because you know what you're going to say on these things. So you don't write them out, you just, have a conversation. So the next one is the car driving thing. Well, if you live in the country and we live on a dead end road, they've upgraded it as, you know, we're changing everything. So it's now X, no exit road. I thought, you know, dead end sounded pretty good. Anyhow, one of the things as cars are passing and you recognize the cars is you, yeah, you're way, we're friendly, except you have to do it this way. So you're driving along and you just go, that's all you need, just one finger. Well, one of the comments was, well, you're driving the car. So show us you're driving the car. And I thought, of course, that is so simple. So you put your, whoops, put your hand up 
like that, driving the car, and then you go, evaluation, and it works. So then I ride my bicycle up and down the uh, Cataraqui Trail out here. It's quite close, about 300, 200 meters from us. And there are a lot of bicycle riders out there. The, the more cogent ones actually have a bell or they tell you you're coming as opposed to driving up your backside when we, we think we walkers, you know, have right of way, but apparently we don't. So there's folks that are out there on the electric bicycles, and then there's a lot of folks out there, and they're basically in training for the Tour de France. You know, they've got the outfit, they, they got the shirts, they got the, you know, the appropriate shorts and all that stuff, and you know, 29,000 gears on their bicycle, but you can actually hear them coming. Well, I don't have one of those bicycles. In fact, I restore bicycles. So currently, the last time this happened, I was riding my, it's a 1971 Raleigh three-speed Sportster, like three speeds only, and it has a bell on it. So being friendly, um, you know, they pass and I'd wave and they would just keep on going. Apparently I don't look right because it's an upright bicycle and you're sitting up really high. So someone said, one of my evaluators said, well, so you rang a bell and you're wearing a different hat than they are. I said, yeah, it's a bell helmet. You know, when you race motorcycles, if you didn't have a bell helmet, you couldn't race your motorcycle because they're the cream of the crop. I have one of those. Ah, oh, but you didn't show us. Didn't think of it. Okay, so there's more evaluation. So I'm doing it over again. So excuse, just off camera here, we'll put on my genuine Bell helmet that was on sale at a bike store. I was going on a business. This is before COVID came. And it is truly a good one. There we go. I mean, it doesn't look like I'm in, going to be in the Tour de France, but that doesn't matter. And then, because I restore bicycles, whoops, there's my bell. So he said, ah, I'm going by the bicycles coming by. So you wave and you ring your bell. And you wave. They don't wave back either with that. But nonetheless, it was the evaluation that made it different. Okay, so now we got something you can see and there's a sound. It works. The last one was really interesting. So I said, okie dokie, what we're going to do next is the stadium wave. And it was going to be difficult because, you know, it, it goes around the whole stadium. As soon as I said the stadium wave, I knew right away that I had connected with my audience because I hadn't done anything yet. The next thing I noticed, and you folks can do it too, no problem. They had their hands up and they're doing the stadium wave. And I didn't have to do anything. And that is excellent feedback, excellent evaluation. Suddenly, you know, you've reached your audience. So you take what you did before, you change it, you learn, and you put that into something else. And you have more fun. And if you you know, screw up or don't make it all work, that's okay too. And that's my presentation for the day, folks. How the evaluation helps you change and makes you a better speaker. Thank you. Any questions? Who's? It's, it's, oh, Tracy, you're doing the evaluation. Do you want us to do something in the meantime? until you're ready for giving me the evaluation? Sure, that would probably be helpful. Be helpful, okay. What would we like to do, folks? Megan, do you have any questions, things that we can help the group get organized? No, no questions, but I did wanna make comment on your dead end comment. I live on a dead end road. And when I first moved here, everyone waved and I absolutely loved it because I felt part of 
the dead end road and part of the community and you made me laugh throughout that entire presentation because uh, you you really brought to light that there really are that many different waves out there. I had no idea. It's not something you think about all the time. Thank you very much. Actually, there are a couple, but um, they're generally uh, considered obscene uh, and I can't do those. <laughs> they're really something you would show to someone that you didn't appreciate. All right, thank you for that comment. How are we doing, Tracy? Do I need to fill in some more time? You ready? I can't find my unmute. Um, okay. I, yeah, I, I guess I can just wing it. Absolutely. I think that's what Toastmasters must be all about. You're, you're absolutely right. Um, all right, Norm, I, uh, I really loved your topic, just like uh, Megan said, the the personal experiences of, of waving is, uh, is very different for everybody and, and certainly has uh, a lot of different connotations from each person as well. I think you did really, really well um, with your props and, and your um, bringing the, what you learned from your first presentation into the next presentation. I felt you really, I, I was quite engaged with everything that you were doing with the the props and the and the hand gestures and the and the um, um, expressions on your face. Um, I I felt sometimes I felt a little bit lost in what you were what you were explaining, um, but it all did come together in the end. So I I I think that might be somewhere. You, for improvement, um, maybe more uh, direction. Um, I, I don't know how to say it. Keep going. You're doing well. Um, yeah, like more of an um, explanation of what each segue from one to the next, I guess, is what I'm thinking. That might be a little helpful. But otherwise, I, I felt that your presentation was really well done and really well executed. Thank you. I'm writing it. it down. Uh, your description of more explanation as you're going from one to the next uh, was the hardest thing I had to keep in my mind when I was in front of the classroom. That they're just not running at the same speed as my brain is running. And um, I would hear that constantly and tr keep trying to slow myself down. Thank you very much. You're dead on, but on the money. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, where are we now? Oh, we still have some time left. Um, now we know what Megan does in her other life when she's not on the dead end road in um, Glen Burnie. And we, I think we know what Mary does and Claudio, but we don't know much. Tracy, what do you do in life? I keep, I keep muting myself so that it's um, not bothersome if there's background noise. I um, I do a lot. Actually, I'm a real estate agent for the last 17 years of my life. Um, before that, I, I was in my family business. So I, I've learned to be an entrepreneur um, throughout my, my life. Um, so as a real estate agent, I still am. I also own a company uh, business called Get in the Loop. And it's a mobile marketing um, platform that helps small businesses meet um, small businesses connect with local consumers on their mobile devices. So it's a, it's an advertising platform, much like radio or newspaper, but it's um, it's the digital age, age and it um, gets to the mobile phones directly. So I also am a uh, representative for Gel Moment. It's a gel nail polish that um, you can do at home. I, when COVID hit and the salons were shut down, I couldn't bear to have bare nails. So I decided that uh, I might 
have fun doing that. So I actually do it for myself so that I can get great discounts, but I also do um, sell to friends and, and kind of convince them that it's fun. So that's, that's my life. Plus I have a boyfriend and a dog. <laughs> the boyfriend and the dog were in the same They're breath. at the end of the... <laughs> All right. Tell us more about being a real estate agent uh, in COVID with house prices going up exponentially, it seems. Um, it's a very, it's very, very difficult. I actually was um, wanted to step away from real estate because of the situation in the market. It had, and this was before COVID even hit. Um, I felt that the market was becoming outrageous and, and that I wasn't able to help people buy what they wanted at the price that they wanted. And I felt like it was getting to be a little too much for me to, to handle. Um, but that being said, I, I really love real estate. So you can't really back away from it. And, and I really love helping people. So I, I, I'm, you know, all in, I, um, during COVID, it has been here, here in Prince Edward County, where I'm located, our prices have been going up exponentially for the last five years. And so COVID has really just brought that to, to another level because now it's um, not only high prices, but it's also competing offers on those high prices. So we've gotten, um, you know, there'll be property that comes on the market and there's nine competing bids on it. And there's just no way that a buyer I've been working with for five years can even afford to go in on, on a bid that's got nine different people, a, a property that's listed at 400,000 sells for 900,000. It's just not even reasonable. So I'm, I'm hoping that um, once COVID slows down and we're able to get back to some sort of normalcy and people will start to um, go back to the workplace, if that happens, then it, it should be better. But Right now, it's it's very stressful. I only work with um, family and um, past clients, so I don't actually um, advertise myself out there as a as an agent farming a, a community or anything. I I deal with real um, referrals and and past clients mostly to make it easier. Okay. And what would be driving house prices up in the county before COVID came? The the, 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 the fantasy that we, that you'll be able to visit a winery every single day and that you'll go on the walk on the beach every single day. And, and that's, I think people um, would come and visit and fall in love and decide that that was some, this is where they wanted to live. Um, real life says that you don't go to a winery every day and you don't walk on the beach every day and that there is nothing going on in the county for um, for young families, you know, so people will um, yeah, fall in love with the idea and and come and buy here. The other thing is, is that we have a lot of uh, people from the city investing in in less expensive homes that they can rent out as um, vacation rentals and short term accommodations so that they can make some money back off of that. So that was a, another reason that homes were starting to go up in price because they were um, city people were able to invest and, and buy them. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. The way I stop the clock here. Start. <laughs> Excellent. You see how easy it is to do an icebreaker? Because that was uh, five minutes, just a little over five minutes. So oh. we should count that as your icebreaker. Oh, well, thank you. And that was just the part on real estate. I cheated. I, I started my timer to see how, how well you were doing. And, and you did quite well. A little. I could, go, I could go on and on. I, I felt like I should just <laughs> stop. I love real estate. I Excellent. love helping people. Uh, if you folks ever go through Picton to give you an idea of how it has changed and how the people from Toronto have moved in. When houses where we live, Megan, um, are up for sale, they're advertised in Toronto. They don't even bother advertising locally. 
But Picton, as many small town, towns had, it had a liquor store, LCBO. And they tore that down. And there is an LCBO in Picton that is absolutely architecturally amazing. And the wine section there is just amazing. And they have built that for the people that have moved from Toronto. Basically, you can't walk into the old, like the LCBO that we have up here. Um, it just ain't going to cut it down there. So thank you. So when the, uh, what is it? Application to organizers goes in, if you give your money to, well, you can give it to me and I would certainly pass it on to Megan. Trust me, trust me. Um, we just go, um, Tracy's already done her icebreaker. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. See how easy it is? Yeah, that was very easy. It was. So you talk about something you know and something that you like. Any other questions, comments? We're almost out of time. Claudio, yes. Are you asking the grammatical report and the oh. timer report? <laughs> uh, who would like to go first? <laughs> Megan? I can. Okay. Hopefully I did this right. In terms of ex extra words, uh, um, we have Mary with three. Tracy, because you did your icebreaker, I caught you at 35. <laughs> Norm, 17. Ooh. Claudio, one. And I have myself at one, but I'm sure that's probably more. In terms of the word of the day, I think only Claudio at the, uh, originally it was three at the beginning and then he caught another one as he did a table topic. So we have Claudio at four with the word time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Megan. Uh, we should have said at the beginning that if you're the grammarian, you are excluded from keeping track of your own filler words. Oh, perfect. Perfect, yes. And from our timer, Claudio. That I'm, Thank that you. I, I got the same Mr. one. Toastmasters. Uh, table topics master, Megan, the first one, one minute, 30 seconds. The second one, one minute, 34. Norm. Table tops one minute forty four one fifty seven Tracy one forty eight and one fifty seven my second uh, table tops one forty and Mary one forty three uh, Normie prepared the speech was eight to ten minutes Normie spoke for six minutes and twenty five seconds and Trace evaluation was one minute and thirty six seconds Thank you Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Timer. And, and uh, Tracy's um, icebreaker was, I'm doing the subtraction here, trust me. Um, five minutes and one second. Congratulations. Well, we'll do this again. When do we do this? It's December 1st? Is that the, mm -hmm. yep. yep. That is correct. Same, same link as previous, but I'm happy to send out the email and we'd love to see everyone back at that time. Excellent. What Christina DeCary is doing for the St. Lawrence Club, um, and she, can, she gets away with it because she's well-respected and all that, and is a wonderful person. When she sends out the agenda, she just puts names in. So then you have to say, oh, no, I'm not going to do that. You have no choice now. So that's an easy way to get people to get their attention to come and do something. So give that a try and see where we go. And also put a little note in that you now have uh, one paid up member. Uh, and see if we can organize them. Any questions, comments? Thank you, everyone. That was lots of fun today. Tracy, you're just scratching? I'm good, yes. Yeah, okay. 
Didn't know. All right, then. We thank you all very much, Tracy, Megan, uh, Megan, uh, Mary, and Claudio for coming, and we'll see you on December 1st. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thanks Bye, so much, everyone. Bye. Bye. If anybody has questions, um, just email me. I'd be delighted to answer them. Bye for now. Thank you.